Hello and welcome to another Django Celery tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to use the Heroku service to set up a Redis server. And we're going to use this message broker to serve Celery on a local development. So in the previous tutorial we had the client sending a post task. We then had Django then sending the message to the RabbitMQ, the message broker. And then we had Celery picking up the tasks and performing the task. So simply put, we're just going to remove the RabbitMQ broker in this flow, in this workflow, and then we're going to replace it with a cloud-based message broker. So we're going to use the Heroku services to set up Redis and then configure Django to use Redis. So you will need to first sign up and create a Heroku account if you don't already have one. And then once you've signed in, you need to go over to the dashboard and then set up and create a new app. So we're just going to call this something random and then create the app. So now we can go ahead and add the Redis service. So head over to the resources and then just type in Redis and then select the Heroku Redis. So we want to provision that. So this might take a, a couple of minutes to set up. So just leave that running. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to set up, let's open up a Django application. Here I'm using the application that we previously built in the previous tutorial, send in an email via Celery. So you will find a link in the description to the project folder or the project code. Notice that we've set up the email configuration in the previous tutorial. Head over to the previous tutorial if you want to know how to configure that. So here in the settings, what we need to do is configure the Celery Broker URL. So this URL is going to be generated by Heroku. So we'll configure that, configure that shortly. So what we're going to need to do is just pip install uh, pip install redis. So go ahead and do that. I've already installed and I'm currently using version 3.5.3. .3. Okay, so back in Heroku, uh, the redis server seems to be ready. So click on Heroku redis. And now what you need to do is go over to settings and then view credentials. So here you're looking for the UR, URI so let's uh, just copy that and this is what we want to place back in our project so go down to the salary broker url and then just paste that in so we've already pre-configured or created our salary instance here in the previous tutorial as well as set up the task in task 2 send in an email so all i need to do is just make sure that the the server's running So here I'm using Windows. So in the commands text, there are some useful commands to help you out. So because I'm using Windows, I'm going to use the dash dash pull solo to uh, configure or sorry, to start the Celery instance. So I'll go ahead and start that. So the instance is called core. So we start the instance and Celery is now working. So we wait to see if it finds the Redis server. It looks like it's OK. So we're using the transport Redis. So that's the Redis instance we created on Heroku. So I start the server and just go to the page for this application. Here I'm just going to send an email. So Django is going to pass this off to our Redis message broker, which is then going to pass it to Celery and then perform the action of sending the email. So I press submit. If I go back in the server here or the terminal, sorry, you can see that we it looks like Celery has processed that task and we can see from the email client that yes we have the email okay so this was just a quick tutorial showing you some of the different options that you can configure for your development here we're using heroku service to configure create and configure a redis message broker and that just saves us having to install a message broker on our development server while we're developing our application. This can just simply be a more convenient way of creating a message broker 
without having to install additional software. And of course, then you can use it on multiple projects and so on. So please remember, this wasn't meant to be a comprehensive overview of performing that activity. Of course, there's lots of different settings that we need to configure, and we're going to be looking at those later on in this series. So thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.